I'm your beloved brother, Clifton Renard Hawkins, bringing you another message from the Word of God. Thank you for your support. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for your encouragement. I must tell you that I teach what I believe, and I believe what I teach. I am a grace preacher. Uh, might sound a little uh, baptistic, uh, but however, I believe that uh, what I am saying is directly from the unadulterated, undiluted Word of God. I suggest that each time that you watch me that you have your Bibles open as well. must also say that you have liberty to disagree with me. I uh, need your prayers. I need you to pray that uh, if uh, this is a uh, ministry that you uh, watch, is that this is a ministry that's teaching the truth. Not something like the truth or something that sounds like it might be, but that this is indeed the truth. Today, just for today, I'm just going to look at the book of Revelation chapter 1 and let you know that uh, you should study the entire book. Revelation is composed of 22 chapters and 404 verses. And the book of Revelation deals with prophecy. The age in which we live today is the dispensation of the grace of God and I believe personally that we will be uh, caught up to be with the Lord before uh, the uh, truths that you find in the book of Revelation will uh, start to take place. The book of Revelation is dealing with the tribulation, is uh, dealing with the kingdom, is dealing with the nation of Israel. We are the body of Christ. We are a part of a living organism. Uh, Christ is the head of the body. Notice in Revelation 1 and 1, the Bible says, The revelation of Jesus Christ, which God gave unto him, to show unto his servants things which must shortly come to pass. There's a lot of must in the Bible, M-U-S-T, and must means a divine imperative. God is sovereign. If he uh, decrees it, if he says it, you should believe it and know that it shall, without any shadow of a doubt, uh, come to pass. Notice, and he sent and signified it by his angel unto his servant John. John is the, uh, humanly speaking, is the author of the book of Revelation. Notice there's some key words in the book of Revelation. One of them is uh, one that we see uh, in this first verse, and that's the word angel. The word angel simply means messenger. In the Bible, uh, angels are masculine in gender. Uh, in the scriptures, uh, you have uh, elect angels and you have uh, angels that have fallen. Notice in verse 2 it says, Who bear record of the word of God and of the testimony of Jesus Christ and of all things that he saw. That's what the book of Revelation is dealing with. Notice what it says, and here's another word that occurs a lot in the book of Revelation. It's the word blessed. It says, blessed is he that readeth, and hear the word of the, this prophecy, and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. And to rightly divide the word of truth, you'll see what time he's dealing with. John, to the seven churches which are in Asia, Grace be unto you, and peace from him which is, and which was, and which is to come. I believe that's referring to God. Him which is, and which was, and which is to come. And from the seven spirits which are before his throne. Notice, I believe personally, and uh, you can look at, at your Bible and study yourself. When the Bible speaks of the seven spirits, I believe that's the Holy Spirit himself. Uh, the uh, S in my King James Version of the Bible is in capital, uh, capitalized, and uh, that refers to a person, a place, or, or a thing, a name. So it's the seven spirits. And notice, uh, his, his throne, that shows sovereignty. That shows there's, there's rule. Uh, I believe God is the king. I believe there's no greater king than he. Notice, and from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness, and from the first and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth. That, that verse tells us quite a bit, doesn't it? He 
is the faithful witness. So there's no doubt about his testimony, is it not? And the first begotten of the dead, he's the, the head of a new order of, in terms of, of death. He, and when, when, when he died and was buried and rose again, he will not die again. Notice what it says, and, and he's the prince of the kings of the earth. Sovereignty, rule, unto him that loved us. And notice, this Bible says this. John is writing, and he's writing to a group of people, and it's a particular group of people in which he's writing, and he's saying to him that loved us. Talk to your English teacher or someone that knows uh, anything about language, and us is a personal pronoun. And washed us from our sins in his own blood. So this is an absolute fact that applies to some. Notice it says, and hath made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to whom, to him rather, be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. The word amen in your Bible means so be it. This is the truth. Notice why I'm stressing this is because I believe that you should have an accurate copy of, of God's word. You should have an accurate copy of who God is. If you don't have an accurate copy of what God says and don't have an accurate copy of, of what he does, then to me you might have a problem with truth. That's why I believe personally that for the English speaking people, and I believe that's the language in which I'm speaking to you today, should have a King James Version of the Bible that you will have the preserved Word of God accurately. If what I'm reading is not accurately, accurate rather, then you have every right to question whether or not I'm telling you the truth. All I have before me is a Bible. Notice, behold, he cometh with clouds, this is the coming of Christ in relation to prophecy. Our coming is a sacred secret that had been committed to the Apostle Paul. And when we be with him, we will meet him in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Please read 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, begin at verse 13 and end at verse 18. Notice, he comes with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him, even so, amen. There's that word amen again. So it's telling us about his coming, and tells us that it's he that comes. So don't make the second coming anything but what the Bible says the second coming is, is the coming of him, of Christ. It is his coming. And this coming is a prophetic coming. Notice in verse 8 it says, I am Alpha and Omega. Alpha and Omega is the, are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. The beginning and the ending, saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come, the Almighty. The first time you read the word Almighty, and it relates, of course, to God himself, is when God spoke to a man by the name of Abraham. And if you don't mind, let us look and look at the verses, and uh, you can take notes, and please do and, and notice what the Bible says, and study it for yourself. You look in the book of Genesis, and turn to chapter 17, you notice in Genesis 17, in verse 1, the Bible says, And when Abram was ninety years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the Almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. His name was Abram, which means exalted father. 
His name was changed to Abraham, which means the father of a multitude. He is the almighty God. So on the basis of that, that means he is the sovereign one. He has all power. I don't believe he's struggling. I don't be believe he's really just making some attempts and hoping that it'll turn out for the best. I believe he does what he wants to do, and he has done it with me personally. He has saved me. He has chosen me, and that's true of every true child of God. He's chosen us in him before the foundation of the world. Christ died for our sins and was buried and arose again the third day. I am, and you are, if you are among the elect, you are saved totally by the grace of God. Thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. I am indeed your beloved brother, Clifton Bernard Hawkins.